All right, folks, we are back with another Starbase Summary. Big fireballs getting cleared up in a couple different things throughout the video here, so let's hop right in. Starting off over at the Mega Bay, that's ship 37, and it's that uh, aft flap being installed there. You can see the heat tiling already all over it, looking good on the TPS side of things there as the flap is suspended by the crane. A little shorter crane there, it looks like and moves that into position for installation on ship 37. We're gonna run out to orbital pad one as well. Remember what's going on here. We're trying to get that ship out here so that we can static fire it using these propellant supply lines that you see on the screen right now. A lot more work happening here, but we are rapidly approaching a time when we expect that ship to come out to the pad here and hook up however they're gonna do it to get that static fire done. Not quite done yet. They still have a lot of work to do, uh, doing some miscellaneous grinding and welding. That looked like welding to me there. I don't know. There's some grinding happening right in the background um, on both sides. But still finishing off the final parts for that adapter there to get that ship static fired. All over it, orbital pad 2. See those SpaceX treads on that crane there. We're going to jump in and look at those two booster quick disconnects. Got a lot of comments down uh, below in the previous video telling me to watch some other videos of ours. I just hadn't gotten to the point of the week where I sat down and did my viewing marathon um, for <laughs> all of the things. But apparently, quick disconnects for each of the propellants here at the bottom of the booster, offset by not quite 90 degrees. Uh, not exactly 90 degrees, like in that sort of range. But... There's that locks quick disconnect on one side. What would I say? Would I say this is the left side? I mean, it's like from your perspective, right? In any event, there's the traveling block that lifts those chopsticks up and down. One big single cable going up and down a few times as a force multiplier. And then we're going to look under Pad 2's orbital launch mount. Was that heating blankets there? Yeah, it looked like we were talking about the heating blankets again. Can we see? Oh, yeah, we've got some on the side there, those foily, the foil-looking things. And they are reducing the thermal stresses in that material before they weld it and bake in some stress that will then heat up and come out, I guess, after the welding's done or when a, when a ship actually flies off that, booster flies off that. There's some ship propellant line venting. We do see this often with the booster OLM, and they sort of blow the lines out to make sure that they're all clear. You'd rather put that uh, FOD into the air, but here we go, all right. Here is a whole thing. You can tell by the shape there that there are a lot of Raptor bells. I guess there's still Raptors under there as well. As that salvaged booster 13 aft segment comes back, a couple things to note on this. Uh, one, it, it's so cleanly cut. It really does look like uh, this is not how the booster just tore itself to pieces when it hit the bottom of the gulf. It looks like maybe one of the reasons they had that keep-out zone was because they were doing cutting operations, potentially even underwater, before they lifted this thing up. If not that, at least on the deck. Because the back of this thing, we're going to see in just a minute, is such a clean, straight line. Now, this is sort of weird. Like, I don't really understand why they have the tarp on the engine bells, those engine bells are absolutely wrecked. They've been on the bottom of the ocean, I guess the bottom of the gulf, for months. And I am i didn't really understand why they needed to tarp this end, right? Now, it's going to pass us. Ooh, it's going to pass us, and we'll see these clean cut lines in just a second, right? Oh, well, the back's tarped as well right now. We'll get to a point where the back isn't tarped. It's just curious, like, like what is the purpose of tarping that? So here over at Massey's, it's arrived, and the top is, or the top, the tarp. The tarp is taken off the top, which is the part that would be the booster coming towards you here, and this is the plumbing that's typically inside. And if you ask me, this is a much harder thing to get uh, views of than the backside with, that was tarped with all the engines on it, right? So I'm interested down in the comments. Let me know, why did they tarp both sides? Maybe they wanted to make sure that some FOD that got in here didn't originate on the road or the port and it actually originated or it came up from the seafloor that way is my best guess. I mean, here they're showing us exactly what the inside of that, they kept it there for a long time. Um, I, it didn't seem like they were trying to hide what was in there, right? Are we just, were you undoing those chains? Okay, we're not cutting the tarp. We were undoing the chains is what we were doing. 
We're going to lift it off of that uh, heavy lift truck. You can actually see the bottoms of the chines. You see the parts sticking off, the little ears, the cat ears. It's got four. It's sort of a weird cat. Uh, but those chines, internal sticking off. There's no tanks inside of there. That's the bottom of the chines, though. And here we have some wreckagey bits sticking off the bottom. And see, that, it's like they didn't cut that, but the top of it, everything else is so even. Was this a, a weight and balance thing? Was it something to do with the way that they got it on the ship? I really do wonder exactly how they decided what to cut and what not to cut. We've got sediment shoveled out of the aft end. Literally got, I guess, sand from the ocean floor there. Or a few iterations. I don't think that came from the launch site anymore. But uh, just working on cutting off the back ends here. Just all the guts and plumbing and everything in here to move the propellant from the tanks into the engines is a little bit insane. Now here we go. In true SpaceX fashion, uh, making some changes. <laughs> Cutting paneling off the side of the Star Factory and then tarping over the hole. What's going on? Have they determined that potentially they need a door here? And they're going to have to rip all this out and change this? I, I don't know. Maybe it was, was it installed incorrectly? Was it leaking? I don't think that you take it all off. It really looks to me like they're going to make an exit to the factory here or something. And I'm not exactly sure why that would be the case. So once again, in true Starbase summary fashion, let me know uh, down below what you think is going to happen. Clad Boy Vacuum Lifter. What? I guess that's a brand name on that thing. Now, are they are they going to attach to some of the glass panes? It says Clad Boy right there. You can see Clad Boy. <laughs> the Clad Boy Vacuum Lifter, I guess. Uh, this, I think, is something that's going to take some of the, the glass panes off. Oh, no, well, that's not a... That's a regular panel there. Those things look corrugated to me, but gosh. Well, there you go. I I guess it'll be interesting to see what's going on here with this segment of the Star Factory. So like I said, uh, in true Starbase summary fashion, let me know down below. I'm not sitting here like, well, actually, what they're going to do is like, nah, we're speculating as to what might be going on here. So I am super curious what y'all think is the purpose for removing parts of the Star Factory here up near uh, where the Star Factory attaches to the office building, right? Ah, another thing up near the beach. Really odd place to put this, but I guess it's SpaceX property and they had some room. They've begun clearing this area and they've put in the plans for that air separation plant. The weird thing is this is even closer to the beach, to the surf line, than the launch pad, as you see back there in the background. Uh, anything you put at this facility is going to have a constant spray of salt water hitting it. How do I know? Well, I've installed things that far off the beach before and watched what happens in like, you know, two nights of getting the salt spray treatment. So it's really curious that they're putting it that close. I'm going to get it. They have the land, whatever. But that, uh, I feel like the maintenance at that facility might be sort of wacky. Let's see what's happening here with the ship propellant lines again. We're on the phone talking about the ship repellent lines, hoping they don't turn on. Might be kind of cool, I guess, uh, temperature-wise, if it blew you in the back of the head, but it might knock you into the middle of the OLM, so we don't want that. Looking back over here, still lots of work. Uh, always tearing things up and putting it back in and tearing it up again and putting it back in. Doing some survey measurements there, potentially. Anyways, going to run all the way back up to Massey's again, because look at this. Okay, look, inside the engine bells, some of them are green. It looks like the Statue of Liberty, right? Copper. And, and then that one engine bell. Zoom, go back. What? Sorry, I can't tell the video to go back, but you can go back. And look at the one video, sorry, look at the video of the one engine bell internal area that didn't turn green. Why? Was that a different composition? that they made that bell out of, that the other ones don't share a different coating or something. It's certainly it's not that that one uh, wasn't affected the same way as the rocket exhaust. I don't know, but it was really curious that the inside of one of those engine bells was not green, was not that copper oxidation green, like you see on old copper statues of buildings or Statue of Liberty, whatever, right? All right. Uh, ship propellant flex lines running all the way back up to pad one where we're going to hopefully get the static fire going. There you go. Flex lines. Sort of drooping off the end there. Um, <laughs> that's what it looks like they're going to potentially manually attach to the ship. Now, is this a, a 
fit check or something like that. You leave, leave those things drooping off when they put the ship up there. I guess we'll see. This is coming from the port connector. There's that big road that goes from the backside of the port over here to Highway 4 so that heavy lift traffic doesn't have to go through downtown Broad, uh, Brownsville. Entire project wasn't ever completed because it was intended to uh, let ship traffic or, or heavy transport traffic bypass Brownsville and go into the Mexican uh, inner, inner country, inner national ports, right? Uh, the land ports. But in any event, SpaceX uses that all the time to bring barges and big tanks and big heavy equipment over. That's where that B-13 aft came as well. So here we go with this. I alluded to the beginning. Uh, moving on, here we've got Ship 38 sneaking around past the construction site. Remember, it can't come right past Mega Bay 1 and come out that main entrance because that's where they're doing the groundwork for the gig bay, so that has to go around the backside and come up Remedios here. But this, which direction this is going to turn, right? This is Ship 38. It's not Ship 37, so this is not the ship that's expected for the next flight, right? This ship coming out of here, from its perspective, should take a right, I hope I'm right on that, and uh, end up going up the road to Massey's, where it will begin its cryogenic proof test. Now, they didn't need the static fire stand or the big flame trench at Massey's to do the proof tests, so they can take this out to Massey's in the areas that they've cleaned up or repaired or reconstructed to get this proof test done, even if they can't do a static fire out there yet. So again, this is a clearly not ready for launch. Um, it is not rolling out to the launch site where they've been working on that ship adapter. This is ship 38 rolling. From its perspective, it took a right. From the camera's perspective, it took a left. Rolling west back up towards Brownsville, towards Massey's. There you go, off in that direction to do some cryogenic testing out there. So, Massey's partially operational. It's not quite a fully operational battle station. It's a partially operational battle station out there. But the cadence continues. They continue to push these things forwards so that they can test it. We got the uh, tag team action here. Jack on one end for the arrival. Caesar on the other end for it catching out. I guess the order would have been backwards from that. Caesar caught it first, coming out of the mega bays, and then Jack caught it as it turned into Massey's there. Nice nighttime roll. They had some nice uh, lighting there for us to light that ship up so we could share these views with you. But turning on to Massey's way, if you go back, you can see how the power lines there go underground because when they were installing those power lines, they, they literally stopped, turned 90 degrees, went down underground, went under the Massey's road, then came back up above ground and went. But folks... That is it. It's a Starbase Summary. We talk about what we see in the footage. We get our full reports on Monday. Starbase Summaries, or sorry, sorry. Whoa, wow. Starbase Update is going to be coming out tomorrow with the full analysis. But as always, appreciate you watching. Appreciate you commenting down below. And we will see you nerds later.